I bid you all good evening, good morning, and good night, wherever you may be watching this transmission. That is I, Mike Martins. All right. All righty now. A little bit of history. Who remembers these lineups? Who knows what these lineups are from? Well, if you guessed the crash of 29, 1930, where the Roaring Twenties turned into the uh, Gloomy Thirties, or the Starving Thirties. Well, look at this long queue. What are they waiting for? Free soup. Soup shop. Free soup, coffee, donuts for the, or the, uh, for the unemployed. Now, what's happening? Well, we're seeing that in a more futuristic tone, if you'd like to call it a futuristic tone. We're seeing it in Australia. Echoes of Great Depression as Australian jobless queue for help. So what happened was the president announced that basically people that have been unemployed or been sent to, to unemployment to basically go and apply for uh, the, this uh, at Centrelink where they have um, – where they could apply for help or coverage for the time off or the time they'll be spending off work due to COVID. Now, you could tell the people here with the bed sheets who slept outside, basically waiting for their offices to open, that that is very serious. You could see a lot of people lining up outside for Van Halen concert tickets or something like that. But sleeping outside and waiting in these long queues, it's scary. It shows that times are getting really, really tough. Hundreds Hundreds, look along that queue, that queue goes down like two kilometers of people queue outside the Australian Government Welfare Centre, Centrelink, in Melbourne, Australia, on March 23rd. So today is March 23rd, so this is like a day, well, they're a day ahead of us, so I'm reading this a day behind, technically. Sydney, jobless Australians flooded unemployment offices around the country on Monday, March 23rd, as Prime Minister Scotty Morrison warned that the COVID pandemic would cause an economic crisis again. To the Great Depression. Akin to the Great Depression. We never use words here like in the West. Akin. Like the Great Depression. After a record 29 years of economic growth, Australia is poised to spiral into recession as the global COVID outbreak weakens havoc on the country's economy. Despite a $189 billion, and that's uh, $159 billion, I guess that's a U.S. Uh, government relief package. In scenes not seen in Australia for decades, queues stretched around the block at unemployment offices around the country as forced closure of pubs, casinos, churches, and gyms began at midday on Monday. An online portal for government services also crashed as job seekers rushed to register for income support payments, which has been temporarily uh, doubled by a 550 Australian dollars a fortnight to help people cope with the COVID crisis. With tens of thousands of jobs on the line, Morrison told his compatriots they faced an economic crisis, the likes of which we haven't seen since the Great Depression, referring to the global financial meltdown of the late 1920s and 1930s. Now, we are in, we were already in a global financial crisis, especially with the houses, uh, Australians selling off their houses to the highest bidders, selling two bedroom, two bedroom detached homes for like 1.4, 2 million bucks. In the same house you could buy in Miami Beach for $160,000. It's disgusting what they did in Australia and how they sold off to the highest bidders. They are lining up to the Centrelink offices as we speak. Something unmanageable at the scale only weeks ago, he told Parliament. They have lost their jobs. Many, and we know many more will. This is the biggest economic shock our nation has faced in generations. So here it is, guys. There's another one here I brought up. So we're seeing these huge lineups here outside of the welfare offices and, and support offices and unemployment offices uh, here in Australia. So queuist, queues at Centrelink offices and MyGov website crashes ahead of COVID shutdowns. Australian welfare benefit for unemployed has been doubled to deal with the fallout from the outbreak. So here it is, guys. Look at these lineups. This is a different, this is a different one. 
This one, I think, is it? Where's this one? Is this one in Melbourne? So here it is. Here's another uh, government office here. And the lineup is just whew, lots of Australians. Thousands of Australians were queuing at Centrelink offices around the country on Monday as businesses prepared to shut down. And after the federal government doubled employment benefits to deal with the economic fallout of COVID. Huge lines were sneaking around blocks in many locations. But as Services Australia directed people to begin their claims for welfare payments online, MyGov website was down. For many users, nearly 100,000 people tried to access just after 9 a.m. So here it is. There's a picture here. And this is somebody over here on um, lines uh, uh, at Redfern Centrelink. Still stretching around the corner, people coming out to tell me that it's chaotic inside, lots of distressed people. It's also starting to rain. Uh-oh. And they're heading into winter too, Australia. For, it's like the first week of fall there. Uh, the line of Centre Lake Bondi Junction. It wraps around almost every corner of the block. So this is Bondi Junction, guys. Are they doing one in, one out? Or three in, three out? What are they doing? It looks like they're doing... Yeah, the lineup goes really long. It's a pretty big lineup. So, uh, small businesses are, 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 are on the hook. Like, there are a lot of businesses that are now in a lot of trouble right now financially, right? Center Lake Canberra. Canberra. Never seen this before. Spare a thought for all you fellow Aussies, no matter the background, starting to be re re romanticized of my dad's stories of the queues in the Great Depression. Let's stick together, Australia. Let's run this place if every, as if everyone matters. So there it is there. Long lineups again. Here's another one here. My friend works in the film, so there's no work around. So he's applying for Centrelink for the first time. Getting a number has been done in person. So... Uh, this is on Burwood this morning. Oh, the lineup is three feet apart. That's why. Okay. So it's going all the way around, all the way around, all the way around, all the way down into that building, way down there. So what they're doing is they're, they're still spacing people, giving people their social distance. Now, it's happening all over the world. We're seeing uh, it's, it's just a huge economic collapse. But this is a great, this Kovi is a great front uh, for bringing down or correction or bringing down the economy. It's a fantastic front to use uh, to bring down everything so that there'll be a correction in the markets so that the, the, the people in power or the people sitting on the throne wouldn't be so liable for what happened, right? Or wouldn't be so at fault for what happened. So they could use, well, you know, Kovi, what did we do? Kovi, we were like, like uh, we were going so well, we were doing so well, but then Kovi crept in and they're, gonna, they're just going to play the Kovi game from now until like, like 2099. They're going to be playing the Kovi game on how things were so good until Kovi came in. They never discuss how money is being laundered through their countries, how money, like Australia has be become... Um, a huge cesspool of money laundering, whether it's through real estate or casinos, how basically Australia sold out most of its uh, mines and stuff, how Australia even sold out and privatized its own water, how Australians are basically losing the grip on their own country, uh, selling off to the highest bidders. So that's become a huge issue. Uh, for Australia. With three or four major cities that people could live in, it's very limited. Australia is not like uh, Florida, where you get seven, eight major cities to live in. And then it could be, it's if, uh, Australia is not, not like Texas, where you get 18 to 25 major cities you could potentially live in, and, 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 and you could buy a house for under $200,000 and make a decent living. This is really sad. It happened in Canada. I did a video yesterday, guys, if you want to go to my channel. I did one yesterday here. Uh, under housing, uh, Kovi housing predictions. Uh, there's two ways that the scenario of uh, scenarios and affordability is going to work out. If you haven't seen Kovi housing predi housing predictions, you want to watch this video because uh, it actually discusses in depth the two scenarios that would uh, that would partake that would happen when housing does go down. There's two scenarios, two outcomes, and Australian uh, the Australian housing story. The end right here, and I'm flying on that that 
guy from NeverEnding Story. That's me, guys, by the way. Uh, let me see if I could, where to go? <laughs> let me see if I could find it here. So this is it, Covey Housing. Uh, Covey Housing prediction, but you want to go to this one. Australian Housing Story. You want to see that one. It's really good. Anyways, guys, thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing to the channel. I want to thank all my friends from Down Under who joined the channel and supporting me for a coffee. If you want to buy me a coffee, go ahead and join the channel. And I'm also on Patreon too. Links up top here if you guys want to support the transmission. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Cues. Kind of reminds you of when it was and how it was. And how did they get out of this? Well, if you watch my last video, what props up economy? What strengthens economy? How did they get out of the massive depression of the 30s? They were in the roaring 20s. Then they were in the starving 30s. How did they get? What did they do? The war in the 40s. Let me know what you guys think. Comment below. Thanks for watching.